Hi, this is Harriet Grayson, and welcome. I am the host and producer of Community Culture Showcase. And boy, have we got a treat for you. Get out your checkbooks, get out your credit cards, because we are going to be telling you about how to get stuff to support a local charity that has done a remarkably wonderful job, especially, especially during this COVID crisis. Who is going to talk to people whose families don't live in the neighborhood anymore? Who is going to provide groceries? Who's going to take someone to the doctor? Who's going to make sure people are fed? Well, I have a group for you, and they're here with me today. They're going to talk about their upcoming auction, their wonderful telethon, which they, well, not a telethon, but a, a bolathon, excuse me, bolathon. Yeah, you got to really squeeze that out. And so, with great pleasure, let me introduce the uh, Tanner girls who are here from Southern Rhode Island Volunteers. We've got Lindsay and Deb, who are, and they have a chorus of people who don't sing in the back, <laughs> who are also involved in this organization. And let me tell you, I have been a volunteer with this group more than 10 years. It's worth every single second to help people like my mother who uh, was in a nursing home, maybe she didn't have to be there. All kinds of people like that to help people stay in their homes, people who are disabled, and people who just got really, really, really lonely during COVID because none of their family was by, by their side. So without further ado, welcome, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having us. So tell us a little bit about the group. I've only given uh, a little outline. Tell us a little bit about the group. So we are Southern Rhode Island Volunteers. Uh, we began back in 1981. Uh, it was an experiment around volunteerism and folks who wanted to volunteer and had uh, talents and skills to give to the community, um, but didn't have any outlet. We evolved from 36 people back in 1981 to just uh, over 400 volunteers now. We have a staff of three. We're here today. I'm Deb Tanner, the executive director. This is Lindsay Tanner, the assistant director, who will be the incoming executive director in July of this year. And behind her is um, Lainey Bella. I'm going to say Lainey's last name wrong. Bella Via. Did I pronounce that correctly? <laughs> I always struggle with that. But Lainey is the chairperson of our event that we're going to talk about, the bowling event. And then Megan Corey, who is our newest staff member, who helps to coordinate the programs and services for um, our seniors. Our primary goal and role is to service aging individuals in the southern 12 communities of the state of Rhode Island. We provide transportation to health care appointments, grocery stores, uh, pharmacies. We provide delivery of food from grocery stores, pantries, Meals on Wheels. We provide companionship visitation during the pandemic. As you mentioned, Harriet, a lot of that was over the phone and safety checks. And it was a really difficult couple of years with people being very isolated. And now everybody's getting really excited to get back volunteering, to get back out in the community, be engaging again. That is absolutely wonderful. It is just actually just a tiny little snapshot of what goes on day after day in providing these kinds of services. And again, you can volunteer as we have done, my husband and I, for more than 10 years. On a, you call us up and we see if we're available. And that's, right. and that's the way it is. It isn't a, a long time commitment. You don't sign a contract. Um, they do vet you to make sure that you're not a, um, a criminal. But outside of that, <laughs> anybody's welcome. I think the minimum age is 16? 13. 13, you 13, you can even be a kid. Uh, it's a good thing to get into, especially uh, among children, teenagers. They live a life that's usually very, very selfish. This way it gives them an opportunity to give back to the community. So it's really good. Get your kids involved in being a part of the community and doing their, their share in making the community a really great place to live. So now tell us about this magnificent event that we're going to be all involved in coming up April the 4th on a Sunday in a bowling alley where you can have, we won't serve them, but you can have beer. There's a bar there. Yes. So you, you can have beer and chips, and we're actually going to provide some nice food. Correct. But if you really want the crummy food, it's there available for you just as well, and you can bowl your heart out. Yep. So uh, this is our sixth annual Edna Bernia Memorial Bowled Over, 
Edna Bernia, uh, the lady that the event is named after, was a volunteer with Southern Rhode Island Volunteers for quite a few years. She worked um, at a number of uh, different volunteer opportunities. As she was aging, the one that she enjoyed the most was working in a food uh, service program in a local senior center where she would go for the midday meal and help to serve that. Edna was also a bowler, and Edna participated in this event for the decade that we held it before we named it after her, uh, bowling each and every year. And she bowled with us until she was 97 years of age. She always raised the most money to support the seniors. She was passionate about community service. She was a wonderful role model for those of us who uh, had the opportunity to know her. The girls this year, Lainey, Lindsay, Megan, as well as our team, our board members, Harriet, uh, a number of other volunteers have come together to help pull this event together. We have a number of businesses that sponsor the lanes. They bring their bowling teams, so there's like 120 bowlers. Everybody gets to bowl for three hours. They get uh, the shoe rental and they get fed. Muffins and uh, sandwiches, cookies, brownies, uh, coffee, soda, water, all of that's provided um, for the people bowling. If you're not uh, part of a, a lane that's sponsored, you can come and bowl. You would need to call the office to make those reservations. There is a fee for you to participate if you're not on a lane sponsored by a local business, um, but it's a nominal fee. There's also a wonderful raffle. We brought some of those to show you today. Um, there's prizes for our bowlers who are raising uh, funds to help support our seniors. And everything we raise at this event supports our food security programming for seniors to make sure that they not only have food, but it's nutritious and they're safe and um, they're not standing and cooking at a stove if they don't have the ability. Or if it's just that they need someone to go shop for them because they can't physically walk around the market um, anymore. It would be that kind of thing. But everything that we're doing with this event supports feeding our seniors. The most important thing, because that's what happens to um, uh, older folks, they forget to eat, or they don't eat three meals a day, or they go ahead and eat a bag of chips instead of having a decent meal, and that contributes to their, their, to their health decline. And then right. that puts them in jeopardy. Before you know it, they might have to land up in the hospital, they'll end up in a nursing home, all that can be avoided by really the, some of the basic things. Giving them three squares a day, making sure many of them take pills, that they take those pills, and also that they're hydrated, that they drink enough yeah. uh, water. And this program does everything for them. So it's just wonderful. Now, people are watching this. They can, if they're not going to bowl, they can come out to the bowling alley right. and participate in the auction. In the yeah, in the raffle, they absolutely can come buy raffle tickets if they'd like. We have 14 wonderful baskets, all either donated by um, local businesses or by our team. Our team invests in what we're doing to support our seniors because we believe so passionately in the end goal for the seniors um, and being able to provide those services. And one of the things I think we're all most proud of is that during the pandemic, when a lot of entities closed the doors and weren't providing mm -hmm. services, we did. We were out there. Um, in many cases, we had to be the ones delivering the food and stuff if volunteers couldn't because volunteers either, um, we didn't have vaccines yet and a lot of volunteers are older and people were understandably afraid or people had chronic health issues or um, had to help family members. It was a very um, interesting and challenging time, but it also was a time of opportunity. It was a time for all of us to really see what we were made of um, and step up and do what we needed to do and make a difference in the lives of other people. There's nothing uh, that you can take home that's more rewarding than making a difference in another life. Absolutely, absolutely. I couldn't say it even better than that which is unusual for me. <laughs> we can't say, I can't say it better. So uh, there are, am I right, 14? 14? 14 different items for you to take a look at. I, I encourage you, even if you um, 
even if you aren't going to bowl or you don't want to get to the event on that day, call the office and, and you can get tickets that way. You don't, it doesn't have to be that you have to be the, at the event itself. You can have the opportunity to call Southern Rhode Island's office. What's the telephone number now? Lindsay's coordinating that, Lindsay. Uh, it's 401-552-7661. Okay, that's the number. It's also on the screen. Call and you can, if you see something you like or you want them to refresh your memory about what these 14 are, they'll be happy to do that. And you can make a... Uh, you can, you can make a, a kind of purchase donation. Think of it as a donation. Don't think of it as a purchase. Think of it as a donation to help your fellow citizens um, go through some, we've had some really, really tough times and we hope this virus is not gone, but it's certainly under control, but help out. I mean, we really could use people to give us a hand. And if the only thing you can possibly do is make a telephone call, have them kind of re, hash again for you what the 14 are, and make, make you think of it as more of a donation than actually a purchase. So tell us a little bit more about what, what, what can people get. So um, we do have the 14 different um, baskets for people to look at. We have a wine basket that's got several different kinds of wines, and it will have cheese and crackers in it. We have these uh, lottery tickets um, there's a hundred dollars worth of lottery tickets. Yes. Um, we have a, a dog basket that's got some toys and it's got a leash and the bed and a whole bunch of different stuff, both for pet and pet owner. Um, we will also have um, a theater. A, we have a theater basket that's got tickets to two different theaters, um, the Arctic and the Providence Performing Arts Center. Uh, we have over on the end, we have um, two adult passes to uh, Francis Fleet. It's a sea fishing charter. Um, so it's for two adults and you get rods too and um, you go out for half a day and you get to fish with a bunch of different people. It's an absolute blast. Um, I've never met anybody who didn't have a good time on it. Um, we will also have um, an outdoor sitting um, type area with a chair and an umbrella and then some books, um, all different kinds of books, something for pretty much everybody. Um, we will have a foursome for golf. Um, grill. Yep, we will have a grill for backyard grilling. Um, we will have um, a, a clam bake. The beach basket that Natalie's doing. A beach basket. And I can't forget any other. Belmont How about basket. Belmont Market. Ooh, yeah, Belmont Market sent us a basket made by them, and it is absolutely fantastic. Let uh, me give out a shout out to Belmont Market. Yes, because um, during COVID, that was a local business that really stepped forward and helped Southern Rhode Island volunteers deliver food to people who. They were sick or they were afraid, but they wouldn't go out of their house. Yep. And here's a local business that does everything possible to make the lives of people who live in the community so much better. So shout out to Belmont Market. And also, they are such sweethearts, they're going to provide some of the food for right. our bowling events. So if you've never tasted anything from Belmont Market, uh, come on down and you can have a real nice sample of what they have to offer. So this is really good. So we're not going to give away money. We're going to give away lo um, lottery, lottery tickets. Lottery tickets this time. Yep. Yeah. Last yeah. time they had a money tree. Yes. Oh, that was cool. Huh. This is a, this is even bigger chances. Yeah. Because right. instead of a hundred dollars, you might win. You have a hundred thousand dollars. You could win thirty thousand dollars on some of those tickets. Oh, They're yeah. Like, so that's really. That's I mean, a I never win. have, but you never know. <laughs> you never Somebody know. Somebody has to you win. You never know. Yeah. You never know. So let's go over them. You know, one more time slowly. So the first thing on my list is Wine on My Mind, and that is a variety of wines donated by Charlestown Wine and Spirits. Again, another shout out, shout out. Mm -hmm. Here's yep. a local business yep. that comes forward every year. We go and beg, and they come forward and they give us not the worst stuff, but good stuff. Right. And because they know that when they do that, 
it gives them a good mark in the community, mm -hmm. and the variety of wines they're giving out are good, so people say, oh, all right, these people know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Right. So yes, shout out, shout out for them. The next one I have on my list is backyard grilling. Right. So we have a, bar, a bar, backyard grill, we got tools to go with it, a couple of party supplies, and snacks to go with the grilling. Right. That is a delicious, delicious one. And believe it or not, it was, it was 58 degrees this morning. A couple of days ago it was 25. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee you that spring is coming <laughs> soon. Yeah. Absolutely. And after spring? We got summer, so we definitely want to do this grilling. And that one came, that one is um, sponsored by our hopeful Lainey, our event chair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool, cool, that's fantastic. So now we also have Summer Day City, and that is a chair. Oh, a chair, an umbrella. Remember, sun is coming, <laughs> promise, <laughs> sun, sun is coming. So here we have something to enjoy those summer days sitting. And oh, we have books from Wakefield Books. We have these books, yeah. There's something here for everyone. This is oh. the world of Poldark. If you never oh. saw that series, that oh, yes. is really cool. Yes. Lessons in Hope, um, stories of the life of John Paul II, uh, a lovely summer read, The Island House, and then a gardening um, book for those who, once they finish sitting in that chair and relaxing, want to get into the garden. Oh, that is absolutely fantastic. And then golf. Now, during COVID, that was the one activity that I myself participated in because you get in those little carts mm -hmm. and you're really far away from everybody. And they, um, if you were living in a bubble, whoever was under that bubble was allowed to golf with you. And if, if there was only one other person, they were actually allowed to sit next to you on the golf cart. Nice. And <laughs> then you could even golf with them. <laughs> so you weren't isolated. <laughs> right. Very nice. <laughs> exactly right. And of course, you know, golf was one of the very few sports out there that actually was an okay thing to do. You got out, mm -hmm. generally you went out when the weather was decent, and there you are out in the open, and it's a nice, it's a nice thing, it's a nice thing to do. So we're gonna look for that, plus we have, we have tees and golf balls. I mean, you could be the worst golfer in the world and need a 20 just to play one round. <laughs> That's fine, we're gonna give you them. Don't worry, we have them. So now, and then, all right, the next one is show us the let, look at those lottery tickets. The lottery tickets mm. that will get you um, your vacation to Greece. Or, <laughs> if you win, yes. Yeah. Or, or Italy, or yeah. some other magical place that you've been wanting to go. So you go ahead and you bid on this item. And of course, if you win, you will share some of that, please, with the people who, who gave you those lottery tickets. They're so, in all different denominations, too. So there's all different uh, potential jackpots to win. Now, do they have one that's like for like $1,000 a week for, for a year or life or no, something like that? No, but that's a great idea. We should suggest that to the lottery. <laughs> I think they have something like that. Yeah. Yes. Not, no, you know, let's not be chintzy. Let's do it for the rest of <laughs> And if we're old enough or young enough, mm -hmm. better still, yeah. they could be paying out I like for, that idea. for years to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Like definitely. Idea. Are we going to Block Island or is that... Uh, Yes. Oh, yeah. we, they have been isolated for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they have not seen any guests at all. Yeah. So, yeah, so some gift cards for Block Island and, you know, people could uh, choose to just go over for the day or they could get themselves a room and stay and spend a few days over there. Um, you can go before the tourists come in <laughs> or during that, you know, big party time of the summertime when the island is just hopping. Um, it's a beautiful place to visit. And there's this really cool thing that goes on on the island. There's a glass company, and I believe they're out of Voikfield. They create these little glass orbs, and then they hide them on the island. Oh. And people go to the island and try to find them. And I believe what they ask is that if you find one of those orbs, you take the one you found, but you don't take multiple ones. You only take one, okay. and they're all over the place, and people go over just to look for the glass orbs. Oh, that's cool, and it happens to be, as far as I still can remember, one of the very few places that even in the height of the summer, you can bring your pooch. They used to yes. let the dogs on the beach, yep. which, you know, the state, state beaches in Rhode Island do not allow, mm. but you can bring, so you, you don't have to neglect the dog, you bring the dog along, 
and but you have to make sure that you bring the uh, summer the, the uh, summer day sitting stuff with you so you have a chair and umbrella mm -hmm. so the pooch doesn't get too hot oh there you go <laughs> <laughs> so you're hoping they win two packages mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly exactly then they'll be well prepared very good and block island is probably dying not literally for uh, for tourists this year because mm -hmm. oh, they truly truly have suffered so Yes, yes. So come on down the, and look at that particular prize or call up. Again, you don't have to be in person on April 4th at the bowling alley. April, call, April 3rd. April 3rd, sorry. Um, it's a Sunday. so Right, Sunday. Sunday. So call them. Tell them what you might be interested in or let them rehash it all over for you again. And then you can just simply make that donation uh, on the phone. So you can have an opportunity to get some tickets right from your house. You don't have to, you don't have to go down to the event. And you can help support this fantastic organization. And then in typical, typical, typical Southern New England fashion, well, actually New England fashion, we're going to have a clam bake. So what's in the clam bake? I have here that it is a, um, oh, let, oh, we're waiting for the, instructions we are waiting for the instructions on the clam bake because there's a possibility of it happening in one of two ways it may be that it's a clam bake you're going to go to a location where the folks are experts in clam bakes or it's that they're going to provide it so that you can have the clam bake in the privacy of your own backyard with your select group so um that's kind of a surprise. We're oh, waiting to hear a little bit okay, more on absolutely. how we're going to, but it is a clam bake. Um, there will be enough uh, materials or tickets or whatever it is for um, six adults. Oh, okay. Now the other thing that you could do is you win the lottery basket and then you take your money, all $100,000 of it, and you go to the Azores where I had been before this COVID business, <laughs> and you actually have a real clam bake while the volcanic heat the is volcanic. actually heating and, and cooking your fish, lobsters included. Yep. So I definitely recommend that. Okay. Make sure that you go ahead and try out for that basket with all those lottery tickets. So win the lottery mm -hmm. tickets, buy your plane fare, go to the Azores, yes. bring your, win the clam bake stuff too, bring that with you <laughs> to add to the. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> they'll, let you, they'll let you put it on the plane. So definitely clam. And of course, the other famous clam bake in this part of the world is the uh, Pequot Indians on their reservation. Mm. Yes. Have traditionally, they haven't again with COVID, we haven't seen it, but well, maybe hopefully this mm -hmm. spring or summer, they'll go back and do um, uh, a, a really traditional kind of clam bake, which is actually where you dig the hole mm -hmm. and you put some stuff in there with the grass and all that stuff. And, and that's the way you actually cook up the, all, and it's lobster and clams and everything. So. That's I, I hope the vis the viewers for Community <laughs> Culture Showcase have a pad and pen and are taking notes on mm -hmm. how to win these raffle items and then what to do with them because you're giving out some great instruction. Yes, <laughs> yes. The most important thing is how to spend well mm -hmm. what you got. Yep. Because you know what happens. You may never get a chance to do it again. Mm -hmm. And you got to take off all the opportunities yep. that you can find. Live this moment. That's right. <laughs> if COVID taught us anything, COVID has taught us to not be wasteful of any second we're on this earth because we don't know how long we're going to be here. And yeah. that's the same thing with our loved ones. So don't keep on putting off stuff that you said, oh, maybe I'll do it. No, no, no. And maybe winning some of these prizes will put the firecracker underneath you and you'll start getting motivated. Or come out to the event or volunteer. Live. Exactly. Life is not a dress rehearsal. It's a one-time <laughs> journey. Live. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And so what else we have is a grand... Oh, my goodness. So now we have the grand vacations. And these are wonderful opportunities. Again, live and, live and let live and enjoy your family. Take your grandparents, take your parents, take your kids, and bring them on to a special vacation. And we have a series of wonderful events for them and attractions. One, Mystic Aquarium. Everybody who's in this area 
knows the Mystic Aquarium. My daughter actually once worked there. Mm -hmm. So it is a, a, just an incredible thing. It is a world-renowned place yes. right here in the neighborhood, and it's a great opportunity. It's a wonderful place to visit, but the science that goes on there, um, the care of the animals, it's just an amazing community asset. It's also a generous community asset to other nonprofits. Mm -hmm. There's not enough that you can say about Mystic Aquarium and how wonderful it is. So even if you're not a water animal lover, go there and enjoy it and see. Um, it's, it's more than fish. Uh, Deb's absolutely oh, yeah. right because mm -hmm. they do an enormous amount of science trying to save the whales, save all kinds of endangered species. I mean, other aquariums and zoos all over the world actually make contributions to Mystic Aquarium, mm -hmm. largely sometimes because they don't know how to take care of the animals themselves. Yeah. So they need something expert. Once you see their animal ambassadors, you will not be able to not love them. The penguins, the beluga whales, the, the rays that you actually get to kind of pet. Touch. And yes, stuff. touch. And, and the fish are gorgeous. And even to watch the sharks and the tanks, you know, um, or see the, the training shows with the, the seals or sea lions or whatever they're doing. Um, it, it's just, it's an amazing place. Yeah, it's an definitely. Place. And we have right here in one of these baskets the opportunity for you to go, and it would be the thing that would motivate you to go because, yeah. my God, you're right. There's Four the tickets. tickets. Mm -hmm. There's the tickets. Four tickets. Absolutely. That's a great value. Yes, and remember, you don't have to be at the event. <laughs> right. You can call up and, and say, that's exactly what I want. Give me my, those tickets. Remember, think of it as a donation and not as something that you're actually spending money for. Think of it because you want to do good in this world. Think of it as a donation because you really will be helping people. People you don't know, but people, just the same. And what else do we have? Oh my God, the Seafood Festival. Oh, the Charleston Seafood Festival. Oh, and of course, SRIV for many, many, many years has helped at the Seafood Festival. And we will again this year. And they have generously given six tickets, so pair of grandparents can take four of their grandkids and go enjoy that day. There's unbelievable food offerings, and then there's, of course, the carnival, which every child <laughs> wants to go do that, you know, and there's a lot to see. And then they have amazing entertainment there. They have um, tribute bands and stuff, and they also have a fireworks show, and you have one of the presenters of that fireworks show here, Lindsay is licensed oh, to, really? and is a part of the team that works with the guy that owns the company. So she is one of his staff members, volunteers. I'm not licensed. Well, I just work with them and we work under somebody who has a license. So tell me, how did you get interested in fireworks? Because I love fireworks. I love fireworks. Oh, <laughs> yes. A girl after my own heart. Mm -hmm. So what got you interested, that, uh, interested enough that you actually are doing something about it. So I am on Richmond Grange and Pomona Grange, which Pomona Grange is the one that runs the Washington County Fair. And um, another Grange member is actually the one who has the license, um, who works for uh, this company. And he asked me if I wanted to try it out one day and I absolutely fell in love with it and I've been doing it ever since. So tell me, uh, uh, your mom is sitting right there. Uh, it, does it make does it make you nervous that she's working with fireworks? It scares me to death. Okay, <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to do a heads up on that one. I mean, they're really good at what they do. They're very professional. They're very safe. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, as a mom, <laughs> it's a scary thing that, that that's one of her hobbies. <laughs> Uh, next is tightrope walking or, you know, something else. Ooh, like, I don't know if I have good enough balance for uh, that. <laughs> like, like over a canyon <laughs> or something? Yes, yes, yes. Daredevils. Oh, my God, daredevils. And what else? Oh, of course, the Washington County Fair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We And, again, SRIV has been there for yep. years and years and years it's helping good. out. Now, that is run by the Grange, right? Yep. And that is a, really a very nice event, a real nice kind of low-key family type event. But there is entertainment, and there's all kinds of little things for the kids. So it's just a, a fun thing. All kinds of exhibits, and, the animals, the contests. There's just, there is so much to see and do at the Washington County Fair. And who can resist the summertime and fair food? 
I mean, mm -hmm. come on. Mm -hmm. You got to have mm -hmm. some fair food every summer. <laughs> Absolutely. And they have some decent uh, local bands. Local bands, yeah, that are really good. And also um, uh, nationally known country acts okay. on their main stage. Don't know who's on that list yet for this year. They have not... They, they tease secret, with that. They, secret, they, they, you secret. know, there's no announcements yet. But yes, yes. there's always national country acts on the main stage. And it doesn't cost any more to see the entertainment there. Mm -hmm. To go to the Washington County Fair, it's, you know, you purchase a ticket and all of that's available to you. Right. Um, it's a great family uh, place. They are um, phenomenal community stewards, the folks that belong to the Granges. Mm -hmm. They uh, donate a huge amount of money to the community, to supporting people. They do that both directly by uh, their own programs and indirectly by supporting agencies like Southern Rhode Island Volunteers. Um, they are a great group of volunteers. It, it's, you know, it's just, the, it's wonderful to go there. You see the fire districts are there. I mean, the people who come, God forbid you have a, something like that. These are the people who come and put their lives in danger mm -hmm. for you. And of course, SRIV, we the kitchen help. Mm -hmm. right. We're there at the kitchen, Pomona right. Cut Kitchen, and we are out there uh, selling hot dogs and hamburgers. And right. yep. um, we don't have French fries. You have to go to somebody <laughs> else to get the French fries. <laughs> but we got the hot dogs, we got the hamburgers, all very, very reasonably priced, you know, because yep. we expect and anticipate lots of people coming with their little kids. Yep. Um, and listen, things have been a little crazy and tight with the COVID yep. business. So it's a wonderful family yeah. entertainment. And those are nonprofits raising money through your purchase of that food at the fair. So, you know, if you want to support the volunteer firefighters, they're there. The scouts, um, the granges, uh, there's a whole host of different I types think 4-H is there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, you know, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's surprising how there is still agriculture in uh, in southeast Connecticut and and in Rhode Island, we despite everything, all the glitter and the money mm -hmm. and everything, there still is viable agriculture, and the Washington County Fair is a way to have mm -hmm. real respect for that agriculture because right. you know, who's going to give us the fruits and the vegetables right. and the and, and without the, bread? the farmers, there is no food to deliver to the seniors. Exactly. Who need good, solid nutrition. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's support the farmers for sure, for sure. Well, that's a heck of a good uh, basket. Now, the other one is doggy in the window. How much is that doggy in the window? Boop, boop. <laughs> I got a doggy in the window with diabetes, Cushing's <laughs> disease, half blind with cataracts, but I still have her. And you love her. <laughs> I still love her. So, yes, definitely. I mean, we have, I see those uh, heart wrenching pictures from Ukraine of late. Mm. And you see the kids yeah. clutching the, the stuffed teddy bear and their pooch or their kitty. Um, and we know how very important pets are for really for well being. These therapy dogs, it's, right. it's not a, a hoot. It actually makes people happy, mm -hmm. calms down children who are obviously very even anxious. adults. For, yes, yeah, Dogs exactly, are very therapeutic. Exactly. In the Cats. hospitals they go, in the nursing homes. I can remember that uh, when my poor mother was in a nursing home, uh, someone would come beside our little, uh, little wretch. Uh, other people would come with bigger dogs, and she mm -hmm. would pet them. Yeah. My mother was very fond of, of dogs. And even people who are, don't even like dogs, when you get to a certain age, you're happy to see something, and they give you a lick, right. and you feel like a, a full person. A so, pet can be a, a wonderful therapeutic thing. Mine is not a dog. Mine is a big horse in the backyard. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, but you know, everybody and dog people do love dogs, mm -hmm. and we love to provide you know some fun things for the dogs or cats or, um, you know. So my grandchildren have a dog. Okay. And then they have rats. 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 So now my son-in-law okay. son is a medical researcher, and he's very accustomed to being around rats. Okay. And he actually um, bought his daughter's two rats. Now, I will not go near the cage. But there are people that actually like mm -hmm. them. My own children like gerbils and hamsters. You know, to me, that's meat for the cat. But... <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> When my kids were in school, they used to bring home the classroom pet. We've mm. had rabbits, lizards, 
uh, we did have a rat one time. And interestingly enough, the kids in school had named the rat Ratty. That was his name. And he did have a very long tail. <laughs> so on school vacations, you know, sometimes those pets are so... Uh, I've had a rat in my home. We had a really big iguana once. Oh, well, the, uh, the, the rat was, the, their rats are sugar and spice. And I understand oh. one of them went to the happy hunting ground already. They, they don't really oh. live a, a long, long time. But now they have fish beside the dog. I, you know, I, I'm beautiful. The fish, at least, are beautiful. Mm. They, they're multicolored, and, they've, and I get, think someone once told they're me They're pretty that's, quiet. Yeah, not only are they <laughs> quiet, they're supposed to be hyper, you know, they're, they're supposed to calm you down, watching mm -hmm. yes. fish in a fishbowl yep. going around and around. To me, it'd be hypnotic. You might fall down on the floor. But anyway, <laughs> that is considered very viable as pets. But your doggy in the window does not have pets, pet supplies for rats and uh, fish. Oh. No. It only maybe has, next time. Maybe next time. You know, maybe next time we could do a reptile basket. This oh. one happens to be for dogs. <laughs> So this is for those lovable little critters who come in and love you no matter what. That is true. Even when they're big or they're little. They yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. So then we have the beach breezes. Oh, my. Let's see. What is this? This is really everything that you need for the beach. So you have the beach passes. Yes. We have uh, activity gift cards for the uh, local restaurants. And... Um, it's just to go out and have a good time. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is an amazing basket. It is sponsored each year by Natalie, okay. a member of our team. And she goes above and beyond. The, um, mm -hmm. the, the bag will have towels and the gift cards. And uh, it's a huge, huge value. Um, and it just, if you're a resident or if you're a tourist, mm. that basket's going to... Yeah. Take care of quite a few things for you in a week, whether you want to go. Like last year's basket had surf lessons in it. Mm. Um, and kayak had rentals. A, kayak rentals, a gift certificate to Matunic Oyster Bar. Mm. She always surprises us with whatever's mm -hmm. in it. But it is that kind of stuff that makes for a wonderful vacation or a wonderful staycation. It doesn't really matter. So this is definitely one that you want to call up. Oh, yeah. yeah. And just tell people, I want the beach breezes. Yep. Yes. Because I want to get ready for summer. The yep. beaches, I believe, officially start like the second weekend in May. Yes. Believe it or not, we're almost getting close to that. I said summer. Well, spring is here, but you haven't felt it yet. But it's coming warmer, and Next then week. summer is just around the You're corner. only eight weeks away. Yes. You yes. are only two months away from summertime. And, and the Rhode Island beaches are not notoriously uh, well-known for being up-to-date on technology. However, every <laughs> one of them, I understand right now, has an electric charging station on the, uh, in the beach par parking lot. So my son-in-law with the rats also has an electric car. And, and um, so he keeps, a keeps uh, informed about where these um, chargers are. Oh, for the car, yeah. So Mesquamic State Beach has at least two, if not more, electric charging stations. So it's just think of yourself as really saving the environment by coming down to the beach. Use your electric car. You can, you can, you can leave it right there. Yep. The uh, restaurant that burned down, two little vandal teenage boys, burned down the restaurant a couple of years ago, but now they've rebuilt it. Nice. It's, it's very nice. It's very nice, and there's all kinds of other little shops, wonderful showers. Everything's really, really lovely at Mesquamica yep. Beach. So come on down. If you don't like Mesquamica, there's Scarborough, there's Wheeler. We've got a whole bunch of state beaches. We do. One pass does them does all. Does them all. Yep. Does them and all. And please make sure you... Respect our beaches in Rhode Island. We're proud of them. We love them. Bring the trash that you have home with you and yes, get rid of it. Yes, exactly. And they, the pass is only for state beaches, though. It does not work for town beaches. Okay, yes. that's great. Well, there's enough nice state beaches yes, correct. that we don't. And in fact, you know, Mesquamica is home to probably more people from Connecticut than from, than from Rhode Island. Yeah. So yeah. absolutely, absolutely. And then we have, of course... The lottery tickets. So, you know, I already have plans. I'm planning on using that money that I will win, that $35,000 at least, that I win to take, take, take a trip. Um, 
I, ha I, I love to go to Italy, but I've been there too many times, so now I have to go somewhere else. But What's next on your bucket list? Well, I really, really want to go to Australia and New Zealand, but I Ooh. don't think I'm going to get there. But my daughter, who's married to the guy with the, with the rats, she actually <laughs> has been to Australia. She was a cellist as a kid and actually played in the Sydney Opera House um, with wow. a group of American students in, um, in Australia. So, That's cool. Yeah, it is cool. It That's is awesome. Cool. So, you know, and the viewers to your show should also know that these are some of the interesting volunteers that we have, the Harriets <laughs> mm -hmm. of the world, who have these great stories to tell, have these wonderful families, and still find time to give back to the community. And same thing with the people we serve. I've heard some of the craziest and most interesting stories I've ever heard in my entire life from some of our clients. Yeah, you know, my husband drives for many of these people, and they, sitting in the car with mm -hmm. him, will tell them some interesting stories. And some of them are, because we do have, we have a, uh, um, a number of indigenous tribes who are still here, and, right. and some mixing among the other settlers that came have created all kinds of interesting combinations. And some of those people actually have been here, you know, 80, 90 years, and they get in the car with art, and they're just loving to tell somebody mm -hmm. this incredible story of, of their lives. So it has been, it, it's, it's a joy. It's a joy yes. to, to, to find out about these people because most of them are pretty old, and uh, we want to catch those stories before it's gone before we completely lose sight of it. Just as a complete diversion from what we're talking about is I just finished writing a book called The Accidental Gangster, Dutch Schultz and <laughs> Me, and it is based on my grandfather, my actual my grandfather, my grandfather Goldie, who, sold, um, who ran booze for Dutch Schultz. Oh, my goodness. During Prohibition and a little bit beyond. And it is, it's, a, it's I've taken... Now that's Liter a colorful. Oh history. my God, is that colorful? And I have taken uh, some literary liberties, but the actual <laughs> stories are actually absolutely true about how they ran booze and how they would kill each other. Um, you know, these they were romantic figures, but in fact they were really gangsters. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so anyway, there's my story, which is fun. So I'm sorry. So my, somebody out there is watching, and they want to come volunteer with you. Mm -hmm. They. Want to be volunteering wherever well, you, you are. Well, you have to be yeah. there April the 3rd, because <laughs> I will be the MC, mm -hmm. and I will keep you entertained <laughs> from, what does it start, 9 o'clock in the morning? Yep, uh, we'll be there at 8 starting, uh, we'll have set up and have the raffles for sale beginning at 8 o'clock. The registration begins at 9, bowling is 10 to 1, raffle drawing is 115, so everybody that's there will get to take their prizes with them. And I personally, sincerely hope that one of these wonderful volunteers or one of the people bowling with the businesses who come every year, all these quiet community heroes who fly under the radar and don't want to say what they're doing, that's so nice for everybody. I hope one of those people is the winner of this lottery basket, and I hope that they win one of those big prizes off of one of those tickets. So they can go to the Azores, or they can go to Australia, exactly. New Zealand. They can go to all those wonderful... They can go to a walkabout. <laughs> they can, you know, whatever they want to do. Uh, absolutely. We are going to try and make dreams come true. <laughs> Exactly. Yes, exactly right. That's what life is about. Exactly so, exactly so. And then, let's see, what else do we have? Oh, we shouldn't forget. Southern Rhode Island, wonderful home of theater. So we have this great center stage where we're going to have first performances by um, Providence Performing Arts Center. Actually, that is my donation to yes. the organization. Thank you so much. Very it generous. Is, um, it, it, I think you, you'll really enjoy it. I love The Temptations. Yeah. It's, uh, so I, it was what I had wanted to do. But anyway. These young folks might not know who they are. Well, they got, so hopefully they'll, they'll all the bid folks, on we it know and, how great and, they were. and go ahead and get some tickets and see that. And then on top of that, we have a um, movie you can catch up. the uh, Ar Arctic Theater, which is also another one of uh, Rhode Island's gems. Oh, my gosh, yeah. So these are two wonderful theater experiences. Everybody loves the theater. Um, you know, they, they've had a terribly tough time of it. Performers all over the, all over the world, forget the country, all over yes. the world, mm -hmm. being uh, forced to just drop out of stuff. Right. And most of them 
live entirely on what they earn right then and there. Right. So, this, and the Arctic generously donated a gift card, so you'll be able to choose the performance that you'd like to see. Uh, it's not for a specific performance, so you can kind of pick and choose what you'd like to see at the Arctic, which is a, a really, wonderful. And we Rhode really Island want theater. to promote the. Uh, w this station has always wanted to promote the arts for many, many years. Yes. Yep. We hosted at least two some, uh, at least two times a year, uh, artistic uh, art shows, visual art. And uh, if you look around, even as you're passing through, there are still some painters who haven't come back and retrieved their paintings. So you can see that we've had many years of um, visual artists doing shows. This year, we're going to change it a little bit, mostly because we have a lot of um, uh, pity, in fact, to, to some extent, for these performing artists who have not been able to make any money at all. So what we're going to try and do this year is have uh, live broadcasts of theatrical pieces. So if you, my audience out there listening, if you know some um, theater groups, ballet, dance companies, someone who's willing to, to come on here, and we're going to broadcast live, we're going to host it, I understand, on something like Facebook, so that your followers anywhere in the world will be able to watch. And of course, we'll make a recording of that. We want to promote the performing arts. I mean, I think the last two years have been terrible, terrible time for most of these artists. We, um, and we have, as a studio, always promoted the arts. So this year we're going to do a little switchy from the visual arts to the performing arts. So anyone out there, you want to sing, you want to dance, you want to put on a little play, we're willing to host it uh, and do it live and broadcast it out there to the world. So if you're listening, or you can contact me at graceandharriet at gmail.com. Or you can always call the studio. One of the Franks will uh, relay that uh, message to me. And we'll talk about uh, whether or not you want to come on and do uh, some kind of performance. If you've got some new play coming up, you want to do a little rehearsal here, we're willing to give it a try. So again, we're real interested in the performing arts this year. So let us know if somebody out there, you, someone you know, uh, is willing to come on the show and, and be broadcast live. So that's the switch that we've made in recognition of what's been happening. I mean, Broadway's closed. The West End in, in London was closed. I mean, nothing, mm -hmm. nothing right. was open. And that's so. it. It is all about community. I mean, and that's what Southern Rhode Island Volunteers is. We're all about community and giving back to a segment of the community that, um, whose lives we can touch and, and make better. And, and this is the same kind of thing. And, um, you know, you can look anywhere in the world if you want to find negativity and you want to find people complaining about their lot in life. But what you should be looking for is who's acting, who's doing, who's making a difference, where can I be uplifted, where can I uplift someone else, where can I have a positive life experience. The journey is what it's all about. And, you know, public television, the arts, uh, people engaged in bringing uh, laughter and uh, performance and assistance to people. That's what life's all about. That's what this is all about. April 3rd for us is going to be a phenomenal day. It's going to be a day full of fun and community. And at the same time, while we're having a good time, we're helping other people's lives. Absolutely, absolutely. I want to just do a little rundown for people because remember, you don't have to be at the event. It's, it's, it would be really nice for you to come, but it's not required. You can right. call up the office, and after I've listed some of these uh, wonderful baskets, if something catches your fancy, give them a call, and you can just do it over the phone. So we started off, now this is not necessarily the order in which it's going to be displayed at the, uh, at the bowling alley, but it is the order, you know, this is just an order of, uh, of the many different prizes. So the first one to think about, wine on my mind. Who doesn't like to drink wine? It's summertime, we all love wine. So yes, there's a whole wine thing. Backyard grilling, oh, I know we're gonna have warm weather eventually, and it is gonna stay sunny, Always a little breezy. That's why wind, <laughs> wind, windmills are really good for this part of the world. Um, and you'll have a, back, a backyard grill. You'll have some tools, some supplies, get a few snacks, get some people together, and you're going to have a hoot of a time. 
Summer days sitting, oh, get that chair. You know the sun's coming. You just relax. Take it all in because who knows how long it's going to last. You know, around here it can be sunny and then it's raining. The umbrella for the shade and for the rain if it's raining. And then, of course, some good summer reading. Very, very important. Everybody should read a little bit. Then what do we have? Golf for four. Think about that. Golf for four. We got a whole bunch of golf balls, tees, and other things for you. So if you're a terrible golfer and you lose them all, don't worry about them. We provided them for you. Then we have the lottery. Oh, the dreams come true. The lottery. So definitely, we want to think about the lottery. Then on Block Island. If you haven't been to Block Island in a couple of days, they could use your help. So take a ferry and get yourself to Block Island, and that's that's one of the baskets that'll get you there. Then we also have the fishing boat. Everybody likes to fish, right? So in one little tangent again, with the accidental gangster, my grandfather was a fisherman. That's how he got involved with running booze. I don't believe the France fleet does that, though. They oh. do not run booze. <laughs> <laughs> they run fishing charters. <laughs> well, my grandfather did that, too. <laughs> <laughs> when he wasn't running booze. <laughs> oh, no. So there's an old history of people near the shore running booze during Prohibition. Definitely. Then we have a clam bake. Everybody in New England loves a clam bake. So there's your clam bake for you. The Great Adventure. Now, this is a multi package tour. This is the aquarium, the seafood festival, and the county fair. That's all together in one package. So think about it as the grand adventure. You betcha. And then we have the doggy in the window. We talked about rats and all kinds of other pets. But, <laughs> but really, it's designed for dogs. We know most people in this world have dogs. They don't have rats unless they're in the street. And they, you know, they don't have all these other things. <laughs> it's for your doggy, whether you still like mine, 8 pounds or uh, 80 pounds. They all like the same kinds of stuff. Beach breezes, well, that's Rhode Island's famous. The yeah. most beautiful beaches in the world, right here in beautiful Rhode Island. And then we have play ball, which is uh, act, oh, I forgot to mention this one, is those little lawn things that you play when you have, the, when you have that grill and you're having a barbecue <laughs> mm -hmm. you go. and the relatives are over and the kids are just right. you know, figuring out how to, how to tor torment the dog, you give them some activity <laughs> That just keeps them busy. Like Little, croquet, bocce, badminton. Yes, oh, badminton there's a absolutely. whole choice. Now, you know, the badminton that you play with as, uh, on, on this set is not the badminton. I actually played competitive badminton in college. Did you really? I did. Another worthless sport. But it was fun. <laughs> it was fun. And it's absolutely nothing like what you do um, in, in, the, the in the backyard. In the backyard. But it's a, it's a similar concept. But the anyway... Go ahead, have fun. It's a, it's a hoot. It's absolutely a hoot. And then let's go to the theater. Let's all go to the theater together to support the performing arts because yep. these people have had one heck of a terrible time with this COVID stuff. Mm. And people still are a little antsy, I think, um, although uh, you'll see what happens next, next month. But many theaters are still requiring people to wear masks so be prepared for that. And um, in some cases, some of these places are, are looking for proof of vaccination. Right. At least double vaccination. I don't know how sticky they are about a booster. But just be, be aware that that might be a requirement uh, in, among theaters, even, maybe even the Mystic Aquarium and places like that. They still may require you to, to have to wear a mask. There are, so just, there are just be uh, retail theater. businesses that do, too. Exactly, yep. exactly, exactly. So I think uh, so, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody on April the 3rd uh, on Sunday. And again, come on out. We want you to come because uh, you'll have a great time. I'm the MC. What could be bad? You'll have a hoot. So come on out. But if you can't, if for whatever reason you can't get to those old mountain lanes there, uh, please call the office let them go again through all of these great prizes that are possible and just make your donation and they'll stick the tickets in the basket. Um, it's very important. This organization only has one major event a year. We've been doing bowling for a very long time. 
It's a family entertainment. You can bring the kids. It's just a kind of really nice thing. And Old Mountain Lanes has been very kind to Southern Rhode Island volunteers over the years. So come on out. If you can't come out, give a call, make a donation. We're looking forward to that. And a huge thank you, Harriet, too, to the main sponsors, to Stedman and Company in Charlestown, um, who have been one of the main sponsors for years now, and Northup Service Center. Um, and you talk about your family stories. Edna Bernier's daughter uh, is a Northup, and her family is there. Um, you know, and to all the businesses, we have some relative businesses who are come and sponsor because they see what we do. But then there are other businesses that are just, they're local businesses. We also have other volunteers. Um, huge shout out to the Matunic and Tuckertown Fire Departments. These guys are volunteers, and they come and support the event. So thank you to, you know, all of those people for being involved. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So now I just want to tell you about a couple of things that I'm just doing um, to keep myself entertained. And one of them is I have a creative writing class. You don't have to be a writer. You just want to scribble a few notes. You just want to get into the mood. Maybe you're thinking, I'd like to be able to send, give something back to my children or grandchildren, a little bit of the story of my life. So we have a creative writing class. It's absolutely free. It's at the Pawkatuck Neighborhood Center, which is on the Pawkatuck Westerly Line. It's a lovely building. It has a great thrift, thrift shop if you want to go shopping while you're there. And it's uh, Wednesday mornings, this coming Wednesday, 10 o'clock in the morning. Come on out and, uh, and bring your pen, pen and pencil, and we'll have a good time. And we sort of guide each other in terms of what's, uh, what works and what doesn't work while we listen to when things that people have been writing. So again, call me or contact me, GraysonHarriet at gmail.com. And uh, we'll be, uh, you know, I'll be happy to get you into the class and we'll, and we'll have a really nice time. So we have the creative writing class. And then even in a more uh, important vein, I have an activity going on with a, uh, a longtime colleague of mine, David Kreisner, who is a, uh, a playwright. We want to tribute, make a tribute to the men and women who fought and in some cases died during the conflict in Vietnam. And that war cost us 55,000 men and a few women. And we want to celebrate those guys because they're getting older. Uh, many of them are leaving us. And their stories are not being told. So through the good wishes of the Mystic Library, we're going to do one on uh, March 30th at 6 o'clock. Again, it's free. Come on by. Uh, anybody who's a Vietnam vet, knows a Vietnam vet, um, a younger and wants to know about Vietnam, Please come. And then on March 31st, in the daytime, at 11 AM, the Pawkatuck Neighborhood Center will be hosting the same event. A tribute to all those men and women who fought, and unfortunately, 55,000 died uh, in, uh, during the Vietnam conflict. And again, our, our minds are pretty, um, we have so many things in our minds that we let things just slip away. Let's not let this slip away. Let's pay them tribute because on March, it is March 29th, which is National Vietnam War uh, Memorial Day. So let's not forget everybody. Come on by, and uh, you know, we, we, David and I would love to see you. So that's the important note. And again, don't forget, April 3rd, over there in Old Mountain Lanes, SRIV. I want to thank everybody. I hope you had a good time today. I hope we're getting over COVID. I hope the spring is right around the corner, really feeling like spring and summer soon to be here on our beautiful coastal areas. So I'm Harriet Grayson. I'm your host and producer of Community Culture Showcase. I hope I see you outside of the studio. If not, I'll be back here in a couple of weeks. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.